Hi everyone, how are you? A friend of mine actually sent me a video of Jordan by Jordan Pe Peterson. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Um, and um, it's a the video is called Exp explains uh, woman's hottest sexual fantasy. And I listened to it, and I was I was resistant to Jordan Peterson for a long time, to be honest with you, until a friend kind of like hooked me up on it. But um, I listened to this video, and I kind of wanted to to um, to touch on it because it's very interesting when I heard him speak, and he's a very scientific kind of guy, right? He has a very scientific kind of a way of thinking, um, which is great. Uh, but I kind of wanted to give the 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 energetic um, point of view on on this subject um, I'm gonna link the video down below because it's it's really interesting to listen to it um, And he's he does this say some interesting things sometimes um, That I, I really respect and admire the way he explains it uh, more to a uh, a masculine mind kind of person that will receive the information I feel like I speak more to a feminine kind of a mind um, because I do speak more about the energetic aspect of things um, and I don't really give scientific proofs and things like that because um, that's not what I do so um, he spoke about the hottest fantasy for females which I absolutely agree with <laughs> and it's something that I speak with women sometimes on my sex pieces program we kind of go into the sexual fantasy part of it a lot deeper for each and every one of them so it's the fantasy of an innocent woman a woman and this young girl falls in love with a monster. So, right, so we have the beauty and the beast kind of scenario, which is, uh, it's, it's kind of the main, the main idea, the beauty and the beast, right? Um, it's the, uh, he talks about the predatory male dominance and the aggression side of it. And uh, he speaks about the, uh, the, 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 I guess the, um, the science behind it that they, that they studied or they studied people or women. Uh, they speak about vampire, werewolf, billionaire, pirate, or surgeon, right? So these are kind of the archetype. But these are just characters. We're talking about the archetype of that beast, that, again, that predatory, dominant, masculine energy, right? And the main plot is that the female tames the beast. That's, that's how he explains it. Now, I want to speak about, it's very, very true. It's very, he actually explains it very well. I just, I'm just going to speak about it from the energetic, divine masculine, divine feminine mm, aspect of it. Because the divine feminine, if you saw my video and, and the yearning of the, of the divine feminine, the divine feminine yearns to awaken and receive into her the divine masculine. And what we, so, so our, because this world has been so dominated by the dark masculine and we're so lacking of divine masculine, our, our kind of shadow fantasy, and it's, it's kind of a shadow, but it's not a bad fantasy. It's, 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 it's a needed fantasy right now, actually, for the feminine. But we have to understand where that fantasy comes from and how to work with those energies in a more integrity way. I speak from experience. So... So it's so the divine feminine yearns to take and awakens the dark masculine because that's what we have unfortunately most of most of the time now. And she wants to take him and he uses the word tame. I want to use the word awaken. And 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 really return him to his divine masculine, right? And if we have a woman or a little girl who's more in her shadow side and more controlled by her ego, she would feel more of that yearning to tame, right? To like he's going to be mine and uh, I'm going to like get him to love me and want me and only me and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's a shadow feminine as well. But if we have a divine feminine, a more awakened conscious woman, whether she's aware of it or not, you know, if we fall in love or we crave that dark masculine, it's because we really want to awaken him back into his divine uh, masculine. And so we use, you know, the, the divine feminine can use her beauty, her sexuality, her power to connect to his heart. Now that is not a very easy task. And the more the, the, the woman falls in love with the, with the, the, more, the more beastly the, this masculine energy is going to be, the more difficult it's gonna be, obviously, because it's not like the movies. We can't just tame that dark masculine, you know? We, and there is a little need of taming it in order to bring him back to his, to his divine masculine heart. There's a little bit of taming there, but it's a very subtle taming that has to be done in every step of the way with absolute integrity, working with our own shadow as well, 
so we do not so we because the thing is our vessel our womb is is the place where that, that connects him back to his heart and so if we are not in our full divine power within our womb we, we really can't do anything for this man right and I'm not saying that it's our job to awaken or to heal a man absolutely not it's not our job but I can tell you from the aspect of someone who who embodies and I do my work as a sex priestess in the world I cannot help but have a sense of deep responsibility and yearning to do so to to awaken and heal and reconnect the, 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 the shadow masculine, the dark masculine, and bring him back into the womb of the mother. And I feel that, especially with, with one experience I had, for example, I feel like I felt the responsibility and this deep craving and yearning, and, I, and, and it, it was almost the, the, the thought of if I could awaken this masculine that is so dark, I can do that for all, for all masculine on the planet. It was that deep of a sense of a responsibility but let me tell you it's not easy it's draining it's painful it's hard and it's too much that we take upon ourselves so let's go back to the fantasy a little bit so i want you to also notice that the female when, when we speak about females human that humans that are in female bodies uh, sexual fantasies a feminine woman um it's not just the, the sexual act itself that turns us on. That's not the fantasy. What really turns us on is the story around the sexual act, right? So that's why porn for women is going to be very different than porn for men. Um, for the feminine human, the meaning, and, and it's not just a story, it's the meaning behind the story, right? And every action within the fantasy is the thing that fuels us more, that kind of awakens us more. It is the real turn on, right? The meaning and the story behind the sexual act. So for women, looking at the hidden meaning of the story around why we fantasize about something or someone um, is, is very important. And it's why we need to understand the female psyche a, a lot more. and and. And the and the human subconscious mind for men and for women, but now we're talking about female sexuality and fantasies. Um, and it's going to be very again in this case, it's going to be very different looking at the subconscious mind of the sexual fantasy of male and female. It is going to be very different whether you like it or not. So um, this is uh, again, and this is very relevant to speak of because of this um, this time of our collective consciousness. And the subconscious deep desire of the feminine to again to tame but i would use the word heal and, and and heal the dark masculine and awaken him and return him back into the womb of the mother the way i call it but you can call it return him into god into his own godliness into his own divine masculine to find it you know it's it is the the, the yearning to find that wounded monster right that wounded dark masculine with a closed heart that longs to melt you know that he, he it's, it's the fantasy that he will create he will want to melt back inside us inside our wombs and our bodies and and feel safe again and feel at home because that's really the way to awaken the divine masculine and heal the wounds it's to it's to it's in a way to approach him with a big with a big part of us that is the mother that is embracing him back and healing his wounds with love, with pure love. And it's not easy because we're still human and it's, we have our own ego and shadows and it's a very difficult task to do, especially when you're, when we're, when we women, especially when we are uh, emotionally attached to a man, you know, it's difficult. It's, it's different to do a sex priestess work and just hold a man with love and, and be that, that temple, that mother for him. But when you are emotionally connected to a man, it's, it's more difficult. There is a lot more attachment there for you and for him and for the situation itself. Um, all right. And when you have attachments, you also have expectations, which, which kind of like put another weight on the, on the matter. So, um, so yeah, and, 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 
and that goes deeper because the thing is why why do we fantasize why do we want that so much is because if we can tame or heal again heal and return and awaken the divine masculine the more we do so the more we can feel safe in the world to be our in our divine feminine so it's kind of a cycle and we feed we feed off each other right and so the, the, the feminine has a yearning to awaken the divine masculine in order for her to awaken more of her divine feminine and vice versa. We, we really kind of feed off each other. It's a beautiful cycle. It's, you know, if you, if you, again, if you look at the symbol, I speak about the symbol a lot in my second book, Symbols of Sex Magic, the Ouroboros, you know, of, of the snake eating its own tail. It's, that symbol has a lot of meaning and a lot of power in um, and I have the snake on my arm too. It's, it's, it has so much meaning. Um, and so, yeah, I hope this gives you something to, to, to explore within yourself and, and, and take a minute to really explore your own sexual fantasies as a female, as a male, as whatever you want to call yourself. Just explore that. But even if you call yourself a non-binary or asexual being, I want you to know that you do have feminine and masculine energies within you. And so I invite you to maybe just play and explore with curiosity those aspects of you, like what fantasy does your masculine have, right? What sexual fantasy does your feminine have? And play with, just play, do it with curiosity. Don't be too harsh on yourself or, you know, too serious about it too. Um, so yeah, so, and I speak about sexual fantasies in my first book, Sex Magic Evolution as well. Um, I love you so much. I am a priestess of the temple. I am a servant of the mother and I pray for the awakening of all men, women, and children on planet earth. Thank you.